Hi everyone, welcome to Barrel Elite. I'm Lisa from Barrel Consulting Group. It's a pleasure to have with us today Dr. Sean Patel, the Vice President of the Preclinical Department of the CERM, that is the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. Hi, Dr. Patel. Hi, Lisa. Nice Thank you see. for being with us today. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, so, Dr. Patel, we have some questions for you today regarding cell and gene therapy. But first, let's lay the foundation work. What is California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, does, aka the CERM? So, CERM is a very unique uh, government agency. Uh, we are founded and funded by the people of California. We have $8.5 billion in total funding. And our goal is to advance cell and gene therapy development for all kinds of different diseases for patients in California and over the whole world. Excellent, excellent mission. Um, so that builds on to the next question. How can cell and gene therapies actually um, transform healthcare to pay for patients? Yeah, so um, CIRM has funded to date over 120 different clinical trials for all kinds of different diseases. And we also have over 250 active programs that we're currently supporting, everything from really early stage discovery to the final trials you have to do before you can get FDA approval to make those therapies accessible to patients. And across all those, cell and gene therapy has really strong potential to make a huge difference in patients' lives. So I'll give you an example. Um, there are these therapies called CAR-T therapies. Um, and so what they are is that you take the patient's own cells and you engineer them outside the body and you put them back in the patient. And they're supercharged to find and kill tumors. And so it's a way to boost your immune system. And so these are uh, therapies for patients who've gone through three or four different types of cancer um, uh, treatments and none of them have worked. And this is their last option. And in those populations, these therapies have been transformative. These patients are gone on to live um, healthy lives. Um, the survival rates are much higher than what anybody anticipated. And so it kind of shows that you could take your own cells and make them effective for some diseases that you might have. And so what CIRM was built on was taking that to the next level. And the, the focus was, can you engineer cells in the, in the lab? So you take stem cells, you turn them into different types of cells. They could be brain cells, they could be heart cells, um, they could be skin cells, and you could then put them in the patient and those cells will hopefully find the right organ and fix that organ. And so, for example, um, we've been funding a company called Neurona Therapeutics um, and it's in clinical trials right now. And we funded it all the way from really early research at UCSF, um, one of the uh, universities in California. And they developed in the lab the ability to make neural cells, so brain cells. Right. Um, and they take those brain cells and they inject it in patients who have epilepsy. This is epilepsy that there's no treatment for. There's no drugs that work for these patients. Um, they have debilitating seizures. Right. And so they inject these cells into the, the brains of these patients. And the cells tamp down the seizure effect. And what they've seen is that it, in, uh, in patients uh, that they've treated so far, um, there's been 90% reduction in uh, seizures. And so that's the type of potential that we have here. And you could go on and on about the different types of therapies. On the gene therapy side, um, what you can do is that at the moment, we have really specific engineering tools that can change the genetic code in any cell in the body. And so you can think of it as software code where you're changing like a letter or a word and it has profound effects on the function of that code. And that's the same thing here is that you might have some disease where all the problem is, is a few letters in your genetic code are scrambled and it's not making the right protein and you have a either a lifelong debilitation or a fatal disease. So with these tools, you can engineer the genetic code in the cells and cure that disease functionally for those patients. And so it's very powerful and very transformative because instead of having to have either no treatment or chronic medication that just deals with symptoms, cell and gene therapies can actually address the underlying disease and change the patient's trajectory. And it wouldn't cause like a bug like coding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it could. Um, you know, there are instances where it could do that, um, but there's so much data and so much safety and efficacy testing that happens in animals, in the lab, in humans before they're made broadly available for patients. Fascinating. Um, that's the technical uh, aspect of it. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. And um, in, in terms of the rest of the world, how can the rest of the world, um, particularly the investors, how can they collaborate with CERM? 
in that aspect. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, these are transformative therapies, so they're very expensive to de develop. Right. Um, so there's years and years of testing that goes into these therapies for developing them. They're expensive to manufacture. And then they're also expensive to deliver to patients. Um, and so there's a lot of focus on technology development to drive these costs down. Um, so from an investor perspective, it could be supporting the development of these transformative therapies, knowing that they have to be patient and wait for them to really do all their testing before they can generate revenue. And also being able to invest in technology development that might help these therapies move along faster. There's another component to all of this, which is on the paying side. So, you know, once these therapies are commercialized, the healthcare system has to be able to afford them. Um, and that's where uh, there's a real need for new financial models um, for these companies, as well as for um, the payers at health insurers um, to figure out novel ways to make these therapies affordable for broad patient populations. And that's where investors can also bring their financial innovation to bear here and really come up with new ways to uh, fund, develop, and deliver these therapies to patients. Thank you so much for this answer. That, that is perfect information. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Dr. Sean Patel. Thank you.